God bless after. Just got to get ready, amen? If you are here, you are parents, you are having a hard time with children, material. We don't want them to go to school, not confident. Talk to us, amen? You need to talk to me after the service. We want our children to be confident and to have the material they need to be able to focus on school, amen? Amen? You promise you're going to do it? All right. Praise the Lord. We're going to go back into the Word of God, and then we can go in our pot bless. And believing by faith that the weather will be beautiful, amen? I don't know how it's going out there, but we're believing, amen? amen. Hallelujah. So good to be home. I say it's so good to be home. I've been, I've been gone for three weeks. It's a long time, amen? amen. But we are done. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. The title of my message is Building on the Rock. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who's ready to build on the rock? Building on the rock. Am I the only one alive? That song brought me alive. Eh? That song just did something to me. Come alive, amen? Come alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Building on the rock. This message came to me as I was chatting with one of my friends, and uh, she just said, she said something. We were talking about God, you know, being all powerful about God. And then she said, you know, and then when the storm comes in life, and when she said that, we were talking about a, a young lady who was going through stuff. She said, when the, the storm comes, then we don't know what to do. She was talking about a relationship, about a husband and a wife. And then when she said that, that word storm kept coming in my spirit. And uh, and I just started feeling like maybe I need to talk about that. For us as Christians, amen, we live in a world where things are shifting, moving, changing. I mean, on every side, amen? Amen. Everything is moving. You wonder, oh my goodness, where am I going to stand, amen? You try to hold on to this, this shifts. And then you don't know where else to stand. I don't know if it's just you or it happens to me. Is it only me? (laughs) Everything is shifting. Everything is moving. You know, the stability you had on on your job starts shifting. No more stability. Oh, God, where do I stand? The wife you were standing on or the husband decide to, to leave you. Oh, God, what do I do? Amen? Hmm? The children you thought that you raised up properly, you find themselves into drugs. Oh, God, what did I do wrong? Am I talking to somebody? The friendships I had, oh, she betrayed me. God, where do I stand now? Everything is changing. Everything is shifting. Huh? Everything that we believed start being questioned. And we start questioning our beliefs, our values. Am I talking to somebody? I feel like there is a, there is a, there is a storms that are coming on every side. So where do we find the stability when things are shifting, changing, unreliable? I was telling God, God, all I wanted in life is stability. And we are all looking for stability. But we find ourselves looking for stability in wrong places. In things that we can see, we can touch, we can control. Am I talking to somebody this morning? Hallelujah. And then we we find our step lost when the shift comes in our lives. Uh Aha. The people you used to rely on, you can't rely on them anymore. (laughs) <laughs> the city you used to rely on. You remember Calgary, how it was a big city, money, money coming? You can't rely on that anymore. So how do we survive or how do we thrive in this world? 
that's ever-changing. How do you stand? This Greek poet, philosopher said something. Change is the only constant in life. He said, change is the only constant in life. Meaning what? Change is the only thing you're sure that's going to keep happening. Yeah. <laughs> Did you catch what I said? Yeah. Change is the only thing you can be sure that's going to happen and happen and happen, happen and happen until you die. The thing is, we do not like change. We like change only when it's for Good. <laughs> you preaching, sister, you should come preach with me. <laughs> change is the only constant in life. But Mila, I said, no, it cannot be only change. It has to be something greater than change, amen? Some of you going through hardships. Do I have somebody going through hardship? Some of you going through tough times. Things have changed. Things have shifted. Today, I want to encourage you. Amen. Your change is coming because it's the only thing you know that's going to happen. Amen. I said your change is coming. You're going through a tough season. Your change is coming. You're going through a hardship. Your change is coming. Ah, now I hear. I have a school student who are very listening. I say your change is coming. This too shall pass. Whatever you're going through shall pass. Yeah. I said, the, whatever you're going through shall pass. Yeah. It's a matter of time because your change must come. Yeah. Your season of rejoicing is coming. Yeah. Your season of rejoicing is coming. Yeah. Your sorrow shall pass. Yeah. Do, you, do you hear me today? Today I decree a new thing in your life. Yeah. A new thing in your life. Yeah. A new thing that will make you laugh. A new thing that will make you jump for joy. A new thing that will quicken your fever knees. A new thing that will make you run for joy. I said change is coming. Because change is the only constant in life. So, wherever you are, don't worry because you're coming out of it. You're coming out of it. This is a season where God will bring comfort to you. God will bring breakthrough to you. I said change is coming. Change is coming. Though you throw, you saw in tears, you will reap in joy. I decree peace of God that surpasses all understanding through your season of change and transformation. I decree it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what do we do? When nothing is stable in our lives, the Bible said that we must build on a strong and solid foundation. Hallelujah. Amen. What is a foundation? It's the basis in which something is built on or something is based on. The basis on which something is built on or is based on. So for us to find stability in this unstable, ever-changing world, we need to build on a solid foundation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I say we must build on a solid foundation. And today, I want to add to this Greek philosopher, I'm going to be me philosopher, hallelujah. My God said he never changes. The only constant in life is an unchanging God. Hallelujah. hallelujah. An unchanging God. If he says it, he shall do it. If he has decreed, he shall do it. If he declares it on your life that you are blessed, you are blessed. Because he is, content, he is constant in his way of unchangeability. Amen. He cannot change. The Bible says in Malachi 3, 6, For I, the Lord, do not change. Amen. I, the Lord, do not change. So this is one of the most constant things in life. It's God, the unchanging God. His unchanging word. His unchanging ways of doing things, amen? He says on this life where things are not stable, you can find stability on this God who does not change. He does not change his mind because you messed up. He does not change his mind because the economy is bad. He does not change his mind 
because things are not the way they are supposed to do. He's unchanging in all his ways. He said he's unchanging in all his ways. For that, we can rely on him. Hallelujah. This message is for me. And it's for you. I say it's for me. I have a, you know, God doesn't get better or worse. Because if he was changing, he wouldn't be God. He's self-sufficient and self-existent. No, he does not change. So it doesn't mean what's going on in my life, he does not change. He doesn't mean what's going on in your life, he does not change. He does not. Hallelujah. So I don't need to change me to change who he is about me. Because what he thinks about me is beautiful, amen? I don't need to earn his love to change his idea about me. Because his idea about me is love. From the beginning to eternity, he does not change. Are you hearing today? This is good news for you today. After you're going to go eat barbecue, happy. Amen? Because I can rely on this unchanging God. The Bible said Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. I don't know where my verse is, but anyway, amen? amen? Jesus Christ yesterday, today, forever, the same. Oh. So if you're dealing with the anxiety of how life is going today, today I want you to build your foundation on something that is solid, then something that is unshakable. Something that is immovable. And this is our unchanging God. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Thank you, my brother. I'll do it. He says, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of light, with whom there's no variation. There's no variation. Say, there's no variation. And there's no shadow due to change. There's no shifting shadow. It's not because he moved a little bit, there's a shadow. There's no shifting to shadow. There's no change in who he is. We can rely on this God, on Christ the rock, something else, you know? <laughs> Hallelujah. My voice will change by force by fire. The Bible says it will change. <laughs> I can sing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says in Isaiah 44, verse 8, Do not tremble or do not be afraid. Have I not long since announced it to you and declared it? You are my witness. Is there any God beside me? Or is there any other rock? He said, I don't know anybody. He said, is there any other rock beside me? I have declared it since the beginning of time. There's no God like me, unchangeable in all my ways, perfect in all my ways, loving in all my ways, compassionate in all my ways, patient in all my ways, long-suffering in all my ways. In everything I do, I do it with love. There's no rock like me. No one like me, says God. I'm unchangeable in everything I do. With what I have planned on your life, I'm still unchangeable. I have not changed my mind about your calling, your destiny, your whatever I have planned for you, I have not changed my mind. If I have declared it, I shall do it because I do not change. You might change, but everything will turn out for good so that I can make my plan in your life. I'm preaching to a happy person today. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes we are afraid. God, time is going. God is saying, if I have declared it over your life, I'm unchanging in my ways and my plans. If I said it to you, it shall come to pass. As long as you have breath in your mouth, it shall come to pass. Because my ways are always constant. Because I'm an unchanging God. Are you feeling encouraged this morning? 
Are you feeling strengthened this morning? So when everything is falling apart, say, God, on solid rock I stand. Because with him, there's no change. There's no movement. There's no shifting. I can stand strong in the midst of hardship. I can stand strong when everything is shifting. And I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what's going on. I have no clue of what's going on. I can stand on the solid rock. The solid foundation, which is Christ. The Bible said there's no other foundation we must build on except that of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah this morning. Oh, I feel so happy. Yes, I'm preaching to you. I can feel it. Ha. Huh. Jesus. Second Samuel 22:32. For who is God besides the Lord? And who is the rock? Besides our God, we can build our foundation on that rock. Listen, everything is shifting. Everything is moving. You know, I'm not sure anymore what's happening. But one thing I know for sure, I can stand on the rock. <laughs> I can stand on this God who said he is a rock. Hallelujah. All right. Now let's go into the book of Matthew 7, 24, 27. And today I'm going to let you go out on fire ready to eat. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> ready to eat. Because at the end of the day, people, God is our all in all. God is the sure thing about our lives. He is the sure thing, nothing else. Am I talking to somebody? I say he is a sure thing. Matthew 7, 24, 7. This is Jesus after finishing preaching to the, to the multitude, to the disciple on the sermon on the, on the mount, and he's talking, he talked long, and then at the end, he, he just finished it up, and he said this word. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man. Do we have wise men in this house? Who built his house where? On the solid rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on the house. Look, the rain came from the top, the flood came from the side, and the winds came on the side. I mean, on every side. <laughs> huh? Blew and beat on the house. It did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. So Jesus says that the rain will come, the floods will come, and the winds will come. That's a fact. Amen? But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. Okay? So, so you see, the foolish and the wise, they both are building something, a house. Even a foolish man has a dream. <laughs> Men can say you're foolish, but when God says you're foolish, you're done. <laughs> but we don't have no foolish people in this house, amen? <laughs> no foolish men in this house. It takes wisdom to come here because you want to build, amen? You see, in life, you're always going to build. You're always building something, amen? We are here because we want to be master wise builders. So we're not talking about the foolish men today, amen? Because he's out there. But the funny thing, the Bible says, they both heard the word. So they must be in the church, but not in Cross Point Fellowship. <laughs> Jesus is talking about the house of God, because he, where are you going to hear his word? 
They are not in cross point fellowship. Stop looking at your husband and your wife. They are not here. Turn to your husband and say, You are a wise builder. Turn to your wife and say, You are a wise builder. <laughs> yeah. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. No one shall fall in this house. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're not going to talk about the foolish men because there's no foolish people in this house. What's the point of talking about something if we're not there? Amen. (laughs) Hallelujah. (laughs) At every season of our life, we are always building. You're building something. The Bible says it's it's like a wise man building a home. You're building a house. You're building your life. Nobody wants to have a cheesy life. You're building. You're working hard so you can have a good life. You're building a family. Hallelujah. God spoke about the house of David when he was talking about the family of David. So you're building a house, your family. Amen. You're building your business. You're building your ministry. Whatever it is you're doing, you're building. Every day, every decision you make, you are building something. So you can find yourself in that, amen? So we are always building. So the two people, they are both building something, a house. Now the Bible says in Proverbs 24, verse 3, through, through skillful and godly wisdom is a house, a life, a home, a family built. Amen? And by understanding, it is established on a sound and good foundation. Through skillful and godly wisdom is a house built. Bible says in Psalm 127, unless a house is built by the Lord... Those who build are building in vain. It shall crumble. Amen? So the wisdom of God is the foundation on which we must build our life. Amen? A wise man takes the word of God and makes it Use it to build his home, his life, his family. Amen? On that, we can build on the solid foundation. Amen? Now, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 1.25, he said, because, of, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. So, you see, we can never go wrong. Sometimes we are challenged by the wisdom of this world. And we think it seems more powerful, more wise, more power, you know, more strong. But the Bible says eh, that the, fo- the foolishness of God is wiser than the wisdom of this world. So why do we go to the world to find wisdom? The foolishness of God, if, the, if there's such thing as foolishness, is wiser than men. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. It seems so foolish that Christ would go on the cross. It seemed that it was foolish to the eyes of men. But it was the foolishness of God that brought salvation to the earth. I say you can never go wrong with Jesus. I say you can never go wrong with Jesus. Because his foolishness is still wiser. This is powerful. Amen? Amen. His foolishness is more powerful than the wisdom of this world. So when God asks you to do something, and it sounds very foolish, apply that wisdom that is foolishness of God, which will be wiser than the wisdom of this world. Things like give. God, this is foolish. How can I give my 10%? Just apply. Wisdom says apply the truth of the word of God. 
seems foolish. But it's still wiser than the ways of this world. Amen. Amen. Christ is our foundation. Nothing else, nothing more. I say nothing else, nothing more. Every word of God that is in this Bible is true and changing, and it will have its effect at the right time. I say it will have its effect at the right time. Because he said, my word will not come back to me void until it has accomplished that which I sent it to. Listen, it's not because it's not now that it's not going to happen. The Bible says that when the time was fully come, there's a timing to everything with God. Though may sorrow may, your sorrow may last through the night. Night is very long when you're suffering. Mm, doesn't end. <laughs> night is very long, but say joy comes in the morning. Are you hearing me today? God is patient. And he wants us to be patient. Amen? So today I want to talk about the cracks in our foundation. Because we are here because we have built our life on the solid rock, which is Christ. I believe you are here because Christ is the foundation of your life. I believe you are here because you know Jesus is the Lord and the Savior of your life. Without him, you can't do nothing. Do you believe it? Yeah. If not, you're wasting time. Oh, let's change your mind. Hallelujah. We are here because we are built on a strong foundation, Hallelujah. which is Christ the Lord. But I believe there's cracks in our foundation sometime. Yeah. Hallelujah. I just put down a few ones. And I know there's a lot. And we're going to ask God to deal with that in our lives so that we can build on the solid foundation, build something that will not pass through the fire. Amen? Build something that will establish our life in the ways of God. Amen? Number one, our trust sometimes is in a man, not in God. That's a crack in our foundation. Put on my verse. Hallelujah. The Bible says, do not put your life. No, no. Is it that one? Yeah. Do not put your life in the hands of experts. Now, when you go to social media, there's a lot of experts out there. <laughs> Nowadays, you can call yourself whatever you want to be. I want to be a CEO of my own life. So on Facebook, I'll put CEO. <laughs> expert in communication and you suck but hey hey <laughs> nowadays you can be anything you want right the bible says do not put your life in the hands of experts who know nothing of life or of salvation life mere human do not have what it takes when they die Hey, their project die with them. Instead, get help from the God of Jacob. Put your hope in God and no real blessing. God who made the sky and the soil and the sea and all the fish in it. One of the cracks in our lives, we put too much trust in men. The Bible says, God, no one can open a door that God has closed. Yes. Huh? Yes. No one can close a door that God has opened. Yes. Yet, we look at people to be our source. That's a crack. Yes. Today, we're going to deal with that. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. God said, do not put your trust in experts. People who feel like they know this. 
Do not put trust in a man, but put your hope in God. Amen. Crack number one. Am I talking to somebody? Yes. Number two. Do not put your trust, that's in Isaiah 2.22. God is saying, listen to me. These are traps in our lives that, that make us that when things start crumbling, we fall back because we have put our hope and our trust in the wrong thing. Do not put your trust in mere human. They are as frail as breath. What good are they? There's a song that said, I'm only human, I make mistakes, don't put your blame on me. It's a worldly song, but I like it. <laughs> Do not put your trust in men because they are frail as breath. Put your hope and your trust in God that when God wants you somewhere, he'll make it happen for you. Don't put men as a God that when you see men Against you, you feel like they have the possibility. Humans are as tiny and frail as you can see it. Amen? Yeah. They are as frail as breath. But we put human as our God. And we look at things and say, it's impossible because my husband won't change. My wife won't change. She won't let me do this. I won't let her do this, 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 this. God said, don't put your trust in their impossibilities. If I blow like that, he'll fall. She will fall. Do you understand? Put your hope in God. Yeah. Put your trust in God. Yeah. Amen. That's why when we get disappointed in somebody, it's hard to rise up. You know what? Because you have put your trust in that person. Yeah. God. How many people leave churches or Christianity because their pastor disappointed them? How many? Because you have put your trust in the man more than the God of the man. So when, when he becomes human, you are disappointed. He was not God. He's ever-changing. But the God in the man is constant. leave church, leave Christianity, this Christianity don't work, I try this, you don't try God. Number two, do not trust in your strength. That's a crack. In your gift and your abilities. Next. The king is not saved by a mighty army. Ooh. A warrior is not delivered by great strength. I don't care how mighty your army is. If God decided this is not your day to win, it will not be your day to win. It doesn't matter how powerful, strong you are. Am I talking to somebody? God said, be confident that you are talented. Use those talents I've given you, but do not put your full confidence in them because at the end of the day, I'm the Lord of those talents. Put your strength in me. Do not put your strength in your capacity to overcome things because God, life will bring you stuff that you cannot overcome. Oh, hallelujah. Where what you thought was your strength become your weakness. Do not put your strength in your army, in your capacity to do this and this and this. Only God. Put your strength in him. Amen? Amen? This is word. This is powerful. So, number one, we don't trust, put our trust in men, but in God. We put our hope in God. Amen? We trust in our God, not in our strength, but in his strength, in his grace, in his favor, in his capacity to open doors for us. Amen? With God, even a full person become wise. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Number three, do not trust in gold and silver. Next. I want you guys to go through this parable and read it. I thought it was so powerful. 
but I didn't want to make it too heavy today, so I just took the last verse, amen? Yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but to do not have a rich relationship with God. Do not put your trust in your gold and silver. Do not put your trust in your money. I said do not put your trust in your money. In my language, they call money a mahera, which means something that finishes. Finishes. <laughs> do not put trust in money. Do you know why God asked us to give our tithe and our offering? To break that curse of trying to put our trust in our wealth. Break the cycle of loving more money than God. That's why God said, give your 10% because I want to break that curse. Because it's a big potential for every human being to put their trust in their money. So when he says, give you a 10%, you're breaking the curse of the love of money, which is the root of all evil. Amen? So give you a 10%. That's when you say, God, I'm breaking that curse of the love of money. It does not have an effect on me. And you're saying, God, I will serve you and not mammon. May all the tithers and offers say, Amen. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because those are strong cracks in our lives. That makes the foundation of life a little bit shakier. When we look to men instead of looking to God. When we look into money as a, a source of safety and security instead of God. When we look at what we, we have accomplished, who we are, our talent, our abilities, our strength, instead of God. Am I talking to a wise church this morning? Amen? Number four, and we're going to end there. Looking for men's approval. This is Paul talking. He's like, for I am, am I now seeking the approval of men or of God? Or am I trying to please men? If I were still trying to please men, I would not be a servant of Christ. Whew. The Bible says in Proverbs 29, 25, fearing people is a dangerous trap. But trusting the Lord means safety. Are we doing things to get the approval of men? There are some people when you talk to them, they will never disagree with you because they are afraid of being rejected. So they will approve everything you say. God said it's a trap. And you cannot follow Christ if you fear men. You cannot follow Christ if you fear men. How many marriages go down because the husband doesn't want to serve God fully because the wife, she's afraid of the wife. She's going to leave me if I do this. Trap, trap, trap. You are in the trap when you fear men more than God. Chai, yeah. <laughs> Today we want to fill up those, you know. Oh, I'm saying it in French. Fill up those cracks, not fissure, cracks in our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. Today we want to be those people say, God, I'm a wise master builder. Paul, I love Paul, he says, I have come as a master builder. I have laid a foundation. Today we want to be master builders. Today, on the solid rock. Today I want we stand up. 
And we want to say, God, just remove these cracks in our life that's holding us back from building something that is strong, solid for our life and for our family, for our ministry, for our children. Because for sure, everything is changing in this life. But on Christ, the solid rock, we stand. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's stand up in the presence of God. And we're going to pray. Hallelujah. Are you being blessed today? Yes. Ah. If you find yourself in these cracks, I don't want you to lift up your hands. I want you to come in front. We need to pray. At the end of the day, we need to pray. God, I have trusted in my strength. God, I'm afraid of men. I put my confidence in people and I get disappointed over and over and over again. God, I'm afraid to be rejected. So I keep doing and saying things because I want to please people. God, I want to fit in a system. So I live a life of lukewarmness. God, I've been foolish. You ask me to do things and I don't do it. And I want to pray for those of you who are here. You feel like everything has been falling apart. There's no place you can find comfort and peace. And you need somebody to touch you. God is all about elevating life. That in the hardship of life, God wants to comfort you. If you are here and you feel like things are falling apart and you don't know where to turn, today I want to invite you to come. We're going to pray for you. Because on God, the solid rock, you can still stand. And you will not be shaken by the winds that come against you. You will not be shaken by the rain that comes above you. You will not be shaken by the floods that try to come and destroy your life. If I'm talking to you today, I want you to come. Thank you, Lord. You are the strong foundation. In you, we find our security. In you, we find our strength. For when men fail us, God, you are the strength of our lives. When my job is gone, God, I'm still standing on you and on your promises. Because I know you are an unchanging God. And you will come through for me. When my relationships are falling apart, God, you'll come through for me. We give you praise. I'm going to ask our leaders to come and pray for people. Today, I want we make a declaration. Lift up your hands, all of you. I want you to repeat after me, Lord Jesus. Today is my day. I'm a wise woman, I'm a wise man. Today, I'll give you my life. I choose to build my life on the solid rock. Father God, I give you praise for your wisdom. Give us an understanding heart, God. Give us the power to discern what is good and what is God. Give us the ability 
for you according to your word, according to your ways. Today I declare, God, that I'm a wise builder. I'm a master builder of my life. Because I put my hope in you. I put my trust in you. I fix my eyes on you. I put my strength in your hands. I put my ability in your hands. God, I choose the foolishness of who you are. Than the wisdom of this world. You are the master expert of my life. And I thank you, God, because I know with you, I shall never fail. I'm secured in your ways. I'm secured in your love. I'm secure in your plan. I will not be shaken. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask the worship team to come up here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. In Christ, the solid rock, we stand today. We're going to give this song to the Lord. Hallelujah. I want you to hold the hand of the person on your right and on your left. I want you to start praying for the strength of God to come through them, for the life of Christ to come through them, so they will be strengthened in the mighty power of Christ. I want you to start.